HIV and disclosure. Now that we're trekking into the territory of people who are undetectable and therefore untransmittable and their obligation or lack thereof to disclose their status to their potential sexual partner. That has been a very heated discussion. What's going on you guys? Rafe, really? That was like, <laughs> I couldn't have planned it worse than that. Came out with the saw for like 20 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. That's gonna be a no. <laughs> do to do in construction. So a lot of you guys have probably seen the video that was published recently on YouTube by Jubilee. Um, if you're not familiar, Jubilee is this really awesome YouTube channel and they do videos that have a lot to do with socially conscious issues. Not always, but that's a lot of their focus. Themes around humanity and people and differences and coming together and stuff like that. So really cool channel and they invited me to be a part of a video that was related to HIV. So basically the, pre the premise is there's a group of us, we all have HIV and we're in a room and on the far left side of the room, if you were to, to go there, that represents strongly disagree. And then it would slowly make its way from strongly disagree to disagree, to slightly disagree, neutral, slightly agree, agree, strongly agree. And they would ask us prompts, questions, or just statements. And then depending on whether we agree or disagree, we would like line up somewhere in the room according to our beliefs and our opinions. That was really cool. Um, it was the first time that I really got to meet up with a group of people who were HIV positive and who were confident and open and transparent about it on social media. And then for us to like get together and have these really cool intimate discussions about our experiences and our beliefs, our values. And there was definitely like a common through line between all of us of strength, just really owning our status and being well educated and having an otherwise pretty positive outlook on our lives. It wasn't something that defined our lives heavily. So that was really cool. Really excited that they uh, posted that onto YouTube. I think it has over a million views at this point. So awesome. I'll link to it if I can. I'm not sure if that's possible. I've never tried to link to another YouTube channel's video from my own, so I'll try it. If that's possible, you'll see it now or you'll see it at the end screen. Who knows? Otherwise, just go to U Jubilee, J-U-B-I-L-E-E. -E. Go to their YouTube channel and then it should be one of the recent videos. I think it's do all people living with HIV think the same is the name of the the video. You can even search that. As soon as the video dropped, it was important to me to be heavily involved in the comment section because I wanted to be right there in real time talking about these issues and kind of like inserting myself into conversations and making sure that stuff isn't being misconstrued or that like there isn't too much hate or stigma being spread around or misinformation. That was really important to me. And as a result of this video, there was definitely one topic that kind of rose above all the noise and the clamor and the comments and stuff like that and really stood out and got people really heated about. And it's the idea of disclosure, HIV and disclosure. Now that we're trekking into the territory of people who are undetectable and therefore untransmittable and their obligation or lack thereof to disclose their status to their potential sexual partner. That has been a very heated discussion, debate that's been going on in the comments, not just there, but all over the internet. And more and more people are talking about it because it's relevant. Because with the advent of U equals U, that is just a topic that is very relevant. It's gonna become more so as time goes on and as more people realize that that is now the reality of people living with HIV. I myself got into many back and forths that spans, you know, like, over a hundred comments in one little thread. But you know, I'm obviously very passionate about it too. So the arguments that people are making is that even though you're undetectable and even though you can't transmit the virus, it's something that you still have to disclose to your potential sexual partner because if you don't, you're taking away that person's consent to having sex with you. Like you're deciding for them basically is what they're saying. And some people have even made it analogous to rape. Some people feel that it is a moral imperative to disclose. So the thing that I've kind of focused on as a result of this discussion, hearing people's arguments and what their thoughts are and what they're thinking, is I've kind of made a distinction between the moral argument to disclose to another person, and you can go on and on about that, different scenarios and situations, and someone you're hooking up with versus someone you're dating versus, you know, whatever, versus the legal necessity to disclose. I think this is 
a debate worth having because there is a distinction between moral and legal. Yes, a lot of times laws are put into place because they align with our morality and so the law is there to enforce that. However, that's not always the case. A lot of times there are laws and there's no morality attached to it. It's just the law because of other reasons. And sometimes there is morality, but there's no law to enforce that morality. It's not a given that because something is moral, something is also put into law. That's just not the way it works. So my major issue with people saying that someone who is HIV undetectable has to disclose the implications of that is that by law you are bound to do it and that if, you're, if you don't, you are a criminal. It's the idea of criminalizing someone for not disclosing that I have an issue with. I wanna say that this issue is very complex. There's so many layers to it. And now just to play devil's advocate for a minute here, when people talk about consent and having consent taken away by not being forthright about an HIV undetectable status. I just like to point out the fact that, and then making it akin to rape, people have sex all the time with other people and they do not tell them the truth about who they are, what kind of car they drive, how much money they make, what kind of job they work, whether or not they're battling with se severe depression or schizophrenia or any other psychological disorders, whether they have diabetes, whether they are drug addicts, whether they um, are thieves, blah, blah, blah. Any number of which things, if the other person knew about, might not wanna have sex with you. And so their consent is basically taken away in those situations too. However, we're not criminalizing someone for lying about their even their name or how old they are or whether they're in a relationship or married, etc. We don't criminalize that. Yes, it's frowned upon. Yes, ideally, morally, yes, please be honest about yourself to the person, whether it's just a hookup or whether you intend to date them casually or you're looking for a long-term relationship. Of course, most of us would agree, yes, be honest. However, it's not. there's not a law in place that if you lie about something like that, then you're gonna be a criminal. Now the reason why I make this analogy to someone who's HIV undetectable is because like those scenarios, you're not affecting their health by lying in those situations. If you're HIV undetectable, you can't transmit the virus, you will not transmit the virus, and so therefore it does not affect the other person's health in any way whatsoever. They will not get HIV. Therefore, at that point, it is just your personal private medical history. It's just your personal information. It doesn't have anything to do with the other person. It is a characteristic of who you are and your life and what you're dealing with, but it's not an imperative to let the other person know because they're at any sort of immediate danger or risk of HIV. With that said, I looked on the CDC website. So in 19 states, there are laws in place that require you, if you have HIV, to disclose your status to those sexual partners beforehand. I wanna make a note that these laws were put into place at a time when the science that we had around HIV was in the 1980s. A lot of these laws over time are becoming more relaxed because those that was based on a time when HIV was an epidemic, we didn't know anything about it, there was little to no treatment for it, and it really was a danger um, for a lot of people. It's obviously way, 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 way different now. Um, you know, people will make the argument that why, how can you compare it to diabetes? It's nothing like diabetes. Diabetes is not a communicable disease, <clears throat> et cetera. And I go, well, neither is HIV when you're undetectable. And many doctors whom I've spoken with personally and that I've heard from through media have said that it's actually more manageable than diabetes. If you think about it, and if you're on a one pill a day regimen, that's it. That's all you have to worry about is one pill once a day, nothing else. When you have diabetes, you have to worry about things like insulin and checking your blood and watching what you eat. So in a lot of ways, it is, it is more manageable. So I want to underscore, I wanna clarify for a lot of people, especially in the comments on YouTube, people were not able to distinguish the argument that I was making regarding law and HIV disclosure and how I personally feel about disclosure and where I stand morally. A lot of you who, who do follow me and watch my videos and watch my channel um, know that I, always disclose, obviously. I mean, it's all over my social media. <laughs> it's no secret. But regardless of that fact, I don't assume that the person that I'm potentially gonna have sexual relations with knows that, and I will bring it up. Um, there's one that I talked about HIV and dating, and I talk about, you know, I like to wait until the first time I actually meet somebody or something like that. But I usually bring it up well before sex is even on the table, just so that people know up front. That's who I am, that's how I am. I like to be honest, transparent, open, so. Morally, personally, I 
encourage disclosure. However, I'm not going to judge or belittle or feel the need to criminalize someone who has their own situation. There are really, I've heard really, really tough situations where I'm like, wow, like, I get that completely. And in that case, I feel like you should be protected from having to disclose because the repercussions of other people finding out and using that <clears throat> negatively and in a way that can hurt you is really real in a lot of places, especially in small towns or where stigma is really high. Relatively speaking, we have it fairly well in the US. In other countries where it's even illegal to be gay, um, let alone have HIV, it's, it just presents a whole host of issues. Again, the idea of criminalizing someone in those situations where you're not actually affecting the other person by transmitting HIV just seems outrageous, preposterous to me. You can have your personal opinion about it morally, but I, I feel like it should end there. And if we want people to disclose, I think the way to go about that, instead of the fear tactics and the scare tactics of saying, you're gonna be a criminal, you're gonna be jailed, you are gonna have a felony on your record, I think those are not as effective as say education, stigma reduction, working within communities on acceptance, tolerance, and just getting up to speed on where we're at with HIV and, and medication and studies and all of that. That I think should be the focus. And not to mention someone who is HIV undetectable is aware, first of all, that they have HIV. B, they're on treatment, they're on a regimen. C, they cannot transmit it. So, I mean, Someone who is HIV undetectable is in a very good position sexually to um, pursue sexual relations if they so choose versus someone who is, you know, kind of flippant about their sexual health, who not, doesn't necessarily regularly take STI test, tests or maybe they took one three months ago and they were negative then and they're telling you, yeah, I'm fine, even though they maybe had an encounter or two or three or whatever since then, but they're thinking in their head, oh, it's someone I know and it's like a hookup buddy and I kind of know them or whatever, so I'm not worried about it. And you're taking their word because, you know, they take their own word. And I think people take a lot of precautions and assume a lot and trust a lot in people that they don't have HIV or other STIs and it's just not the case. And because someone's coming up to you and saying, yes, I have HIV and I'm undetectable, then it's like, oh, like, no, I'm not dealing with that. I'd rather hook up with someone that I met at a club um, who says that they are, have been tested recently and that they're all good or that they don't usually do this type of thing and so, you know, they're clean and good. Uh, I think that that kind of thinking is really backwards and, and not intuitive and it's something that people need to be aware of. I mean, we should just assume that everyone potentially has an STI and potentially has HIV and if they do and they don't know it, then they're not getting treated for it. And, that they're a higher risk of transmitting that to you, therefore. Anyway, enough of that tangent. The point is, we all need to take our sexual health into our own hands and be responsible for ourselves. Yes, I think it's, it's great, it's good, I support it. If the other person takes the opportunity to disclose to you their HIV status or any other um, STIs that they may or may not ha have. However, you should not rely on other people to start that conversation. It is equally, if not more so, for you, your responsibility to start that conversation. Your sexual health is your sp responsibility. It is your decision and your responsibility whether you use a condom or not. It is also your decision or your responsibility whether you are on PrEP or not, which can, I think it's like the efficacy is like 96% or something great. At the end of the day, it's your response. Your sexual health is your responsibility. And if you're taking proper precautions, then it shouldn't be a problem. And someone who with HIV undetectable is definitely not a problem. Yes, we want people to disclose. No, it doesn't have real life implications if they don't because they're on treatment and they're undetectable. That's just how I feel. Please let me know what you think, your thoughts, love to hear it. I would love to continue this discussion and if it's necessary, we can always do a follow-up video and address other like other things because I think this is a complex topic and it's worth diving into and addressing specifics. So, comment below, like this video if you liked it or dislike it if you dislike it. I wanna, I wanna hear it, I wanna know it all. So let me know and I'll see you guys soon. All right, peace.